So we've created a basic application. We've added camera support and database support in addition to live tile support. Now we're going to add audio memo support. And we'll add this as part of the details view where we can record or stop recording a memo, play or stop playback of that memo. Now recording audio is an XNA function that can be easily integrated into a Silverlight application, but that in and of itself is not a change with Mango. So what we've done differently is we're extending it so that the audio will also play if we leave the screen or even if we leave the app by using a background audio agent. So if we look at the code behind, we have to create a microphone class and we need to create a buffer. And effectively all we do is we create the microphone, we do a little bit of math based on the buffer duration, the sample rate, and from that we figure out how much of a buffer we need. And periodically the microphone class will raise an event saying that the buffer is ready. So when the record button is clicked, we make sure that we're not already recording. We make sure that nothing is playing in the background. And then we create a file so that we can start saving the data. When we call mic.start, we need to get ready for the buffer ready event being raised. As long as we're still recording, we'll get the data, save it in our buffer, and then write that out to the file. When the user is ready to stop recording, we request a stop. That will enable us to record the last data that comes back from the buffer. And then we'll stop the microphone, we'll close out our file, and then close the file and dispose of the isolated storage. Wave Helper is not a framework class, but we've included it. This just assists in writing out what needs to be written out to create a wave file. Now, if you don't do that, you'll simply be saving out a stream of 16-bit PCM audio data that can be used in some applications as raw data, but it cannot be used from the operating system. Windows Phone will not be able to play that from its background audio agent. When they say they're ready to play, we call the background audio player, get the current instance, and we have to create an audio track object. So we create a URI that points to the file we just recorded. And then we can pass in the name, artist, and album, and an associated tag if we want to. And all of this could come from the memo itself. And then alternatively, we can also pass in a URI to album art. This could theoretically be the image that's in the actual memo. And then we can say which player controls we want. Now to keep it simple, we're enabling all controls, but we don't actually allow them to skip tracks, so we could just as easily remove that. The rest of the equation is creating an audio playback agent. You can create an audio agent by going to Add New Project and creating Windows Phone Audio Playback Agent. It's mostly boilerplate code, but if you need to override things in order to support track skipping or any other functionality, you can do that here. And, and the actual music will be played when you call the background audio player instance to play, or you can tell it to stop. On our main page, we also have a button to stop the background audio. And then as an extra safe step, in the, when the app starts up, we check to see if the debugger is attached, and we close the background audio player. And we do this because during debugging, it can be tricky if our app crashes or if something goes wrong, our background agent may still be playing. It may be difficult to keep track of that, especially if the debugger gets attached to it. So we simply close out that background player instance anytime we start up if we're debugging. It's important to point out that the playback agent does actually have to be added as a reference to this project. And in doing so, the app manifest file is updated with an extended task that points to the audio agent. Otherwise, you won't get any audio to play. Again, though, this is automatic. And simply by adding the reference to the playback agent project, it will automatically update the manifest.
So let's start the demo app. And the stop background audio button is here. If I click it, I can actually tell that there's nothing playing at the moment. I can be aware of there being background audio. So this can be useful so that your application can perhaps prompt a user to stop background audio from playing so that your own audio can play. So I'm going to take a photo. And then under history, I can take a look at the memos. Because this is on the emulator, we can't actually play back the sound. But you can see that if I press the play button, it does at least update the UI as though it was playing it. So this is a demonstration of how you can record and playback audio and allow it to function as a background agent. This can be very useful when you don't want to restrict the user to a single screen during the entire playback.